is the name of Jesus Christ. We thank God for this new day that he has given to us. His faithfulness and mercies endures forever and ever. Indeed, the Bible says that his mercies are new every morning, every morning without fail, and that's why we are not consumed. We thank God even today, his mercies are new in our lives, and that is why we are here today to receive yet the word of the Lord, because his mercies are new upon our lives in Jesus' name. Welcome, my brother and my sister, from wherever you are watching us from. We thank God for you that you have, you have been faithful in watching this program. And today, our bishop is going to minister to you the word of God. We are coming live from Apostolic Faith Church, uh, Nairobi, Kenya. And we thank God for this opportunity, for this door that the Lord has opened for our bishop. We are going to pray, and then the bishop is going to minister the word of God to you. Have your heart ready to receive the revelation, to receive the prophecy. Have your note, notebook and also your pen to write down the prophecy and the word of God that is going to reveal to you in the name of Jesus Christ. God is faithful. He is on your side. He is going to fight your battles and he is going to equip you in a great way. Just have faith in God and he is coming light wherever you are. At your point of need, the Lord is ministering to you. Let us pray as we welcome our bishop. Father, we thank you. We bless your name, O God Almighty. Thank you for your goodness and kindness. Your faithfulness endures forever and ever. Thank you, Father, for your servant as he comes to minister. You are the Lord in his life, King of glory. We pray that your grace, your anointing be upon his life, O Father. That God is going to be a vessel in your hands, my God, to bless the church to the glory and to the honor of your name. We thank you and honor you because you have prayed all this in Jesus' name. Let us welcome our bishop to come and minister the word of God. God is faithful. Welcome, bishop. Thank you. Wonderful. Jesus loves you so much. Bible says the love of God is revealed from heaven in that Jesus died for us while we were yet sinners. Can you imagine the love was there before you knew it? And we thank God for the love of the cross. We are loved. Not The love also has power because Jesus loved us and he demonstrated that love. And in the process, he also demonstrated power over the devil. Now, we are from Apostolic Faith Church in Nairobi. And remember, we still remind you about the great project of 10,000 seater church in Umoja, Kagodo Road, that God has given us. Already we are going there, but we are now clearing the loan, and in Jesus' name, we want you and appeal to you to commit yourself to this blessing. Whenever God raises an altar, this altar is powerful. God wants you to raise with it. It has your blessing. And as per now, we are appealing to people to set yourself as you walk with God to deposit money every end of the month, which we will use to pay the bank. You can have several dollars. You can maybe say, you can maybe say you'll be depositing maybe $500 every month or $10,000 every month. And I tell you, it will be great, great. We want to clear this in an unusual way. Within two years, we'll be through. And we will invite you in consecration, consecration ceremony, maybe within two years, and your eyes will see all what God has done through you. You get the bank details, get my, my phone, maybe you can call me, I will give, and, and start, start obeying the voice of God. Remember our message, unlock your faith, unlock your faith. Now we want to go to the second part of this message, unlocking your faith. One, do not allow yourself to lose your confidence. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35, do not lose your confidence for it has a great reward. Yes, it says, therefore, do not cast away your confidence which has great reward. Do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. That's very important. One thing, let me say this, is from experience. 
Whenever the devil wants to attack, he fasts in a very crafty way in friends, ways that build your strength. He influences your prayer. He influences your active life. You realize that you are becoming entangled and under some heaviness that you can't understand. He influences your commitment to the core and church activities. You just stall, move down and down. Because when you are not active, maybe you have a program of, of prayer and fasting. You have a program of, of, of ministry. And you graduate with the draw. And sometimes you feel comfortable when you're not doing anything. He causes you to have a kind of rest that is demonic. Yes, you end up in lack and poverty or maybe whatever. And therefore, watch out those tactics whereby you start becoming spiritually and physically and mentally lazy out of just influence that God understand. Please don't allow it. So that in the name of Jesus, you will be able to keep the confidence. Do not lose, cast away your confidence, for it has a great reward. Yes, another thing that is very important is build on covenant work. In the Bible, God will like to make an agreement whereby he speaks to you, you obey, and you walk with him. You know when the Bible book, when God says, keep my voice, be careful, be diligent, be careful to keep the, cov the covenant that God made with you. When you build on a covenant walk, there are two things that happen. One, you have discipline. Two, God can trust you. God can trust. It's like marriage. My wife can trust me based on my commitment to the covenant we made. I can also trust her based on the covenant. Covenant means keeping a pace, keeping things that God told you without wavering and without failure. Another thing is Commit yourself to live undefiled life. If you check the life of Daniel, in Daniel chapter 1, Daniel said, Bible says, and Daniel made a decision not to defile himself. Yes, not to defile himself. Daniel 1 verse 8, but Daniel purpose in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of king's delicacies. That make a commitment early enough because defilement will eventually uh, lead into losing your confidence. Daniel in the den of lion had confidence. And this man said to the king, this man said to the king, when king came around uh, to check, uh -huh, the Bible says something very, very important. Daniel, Daniel spoke to him and said, Mr. King, God intervened. Look at now, that is Daniel chapter 6. Uh, go to 24. Go down, down, see the decree. Uh, and see now how, how Daniel kept his prayer life. If you go to verse 10. It was, and Daniel knew that the writing was signed and went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, and he knelt down on his knees, and three times, knees, three times that day, and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he was, it was, as was his custom since early days. That is very important. Now, when, when the king came down to check on Daniel, he found these people were secure. Hey, if you go to verse 20. And when he came to the den, he cried out with lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke saying to Daniel, Daniel, 
servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve, continually been able to deliver you from the lions? And Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and sat the lions' mouths so that they, ha they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done not wrong before you. That is commitment to righteousness and undefiled life. Another thing very important that you keep your faith at work is the witness of the Spirit of God. In Romans chapter 8 verse 16, the Bible says the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are, that we are God's children. Now, in the life of people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, one thing that you should never lose is consciousness of the indwelling of the Spirit of God. Can you retain consciousness of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? And the Holy Spirit, even when you are, you are so much uh, withdrawn or people have deserted you, even when you are thrown away, the Holy Spirit will just be speaking to your heart. We call that the witness of the Spirit. Where the Holy Ghost confirms your heart. I'm still with you. The Lord is on your side. God will see you through. Do not lose the, that voice. The witness of the Holy Spirit. Another thing that you cause our faith to be unlocked. Open channels of revelation. Open channels of God speaking and doing his things. It's, it's important not to live just natural, 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 and you don't have openings that God can access you. That's very important. Another thing is that establish and sustain network. God wants you to have network. There's network with God. If today God starts speaking to you, if today God starts blessing you in a unique way, why don't you keep that network? Keep that faithfulness. It's very important. You don't have to keep on falling and then building again, falling, building again, whatever God has caused me or you to attain. And you know God is your friend. Do not lose it. Keep it. And continually your faith will be the key dot. Very, very well by the grace of God. If you read Isaiah chapter 36 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 36 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 36 verse 1. The Bible says, the Bible says something unique there. It came to pass. Now this is a story when King Zenakaleb of Syria attacked Judah in the days of Hezekiah. And Hezekiah was charged. This man came, uh, Zenakaru king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. And if you go further, verse 4, then Labshake said to them, say now to Hezekiah, Hezekiah, thus says the Lord king, the king of Assyria, what confidence is this in which you trust? What confidence is this in which you trust? You know, he's saying, I've destroyed all other cities. I've captured and taken all other, uh, all other countries. I'm ruling the world. What unique, what confidence, what confidence, what this confidence you king of Judah do you think you have? It's interesting. If you go to verse 16 of the same chapter, the Bible says, the Lord appeared to, uh, let's go to verse 14. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that, that the messenger from the king of Assyria wanted to do is to destroy confidence. And he started 
speaking to people, saying in verse 14, uh, Do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you. He demoralized people. He even said, Do not listen to Hezekiah. That is too bad. But Hezekiah had trust in God. If you go to chapter 37, verse 14, the Bible says, And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messenger, and he read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. There are, I don't know. There are times when you go through the content of such a letter. Or maybe you reason to a message. It disturbs you. You don't know what to do. Do you know Hezekiah went and laid it before the throne of God? And when he did that, if you read verse 14 to 15, the Bible says, Hezekiah prayed to the Lord saying, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, you are God. You alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, you, you made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O oh Lord, and hear me. It's powerful. When you go to verse 21, then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Ezekiel, saying, Thus is the Lord, God of Israel, because you have prayed to me. Again, as the Nakaru king of Syria, this is the word which the Lord has spoken. And God, God spoke encouragement. God spoke and spoke. And the, if you go to verse that is 6, the angel of the Lord went out and killed, and killed in the camp of Assyrians 185,000. And when people arose early in the morning, there were corpses all dead. So then a current King of Assyria departed and went away, returned home, and remained there. And it came to pass, as he was worshipping in the, in the idol gods, that's what the, it's said, uh -huh, something happened that he, he, he died, and you can see that in verse 38. See how Hezekiah handled this. And this one, however, however big or strong the threats are, you end up with your faith being unlocked and God intervening. Preach, do not, as do not lose. Please sustain, establish, and sustain your network with God. And God will bless you. Ha uh ha. -huh. Now, follow God closely and try to discern instructions step by step. There are times you need to be sensitive to discern and you'll be able to see some details step by step as God leads you. Another thing that you unlock your faith, offer right sacrifices. When you appear before God. Read something in 2 Chronicles chapter 1 verse 6 and 7. See how these people offered sacrifice before God. See how Abel offered sacrifice in Genesis chapter 4 verse 4. Bible says, and God respected Abel and his sacrifice. Number, another thing, have breakthrough with the heart of God. Yes! There could be so many obstacles, even people who do not consider you. Why don't you pray and penetrate through until you get to the heart of God? Remember what happened to Bartimaeus. He was sitting beside the road. Poor, blind man. People stopped him from praying, calling Jesus. But his voice went through and Christ stopped and healed him. Dwell in God's presence. Do not lose his presence. Keep his presence. Dwell there. Please avoid things that can destroy your dwelling in the 
praise of God. Bible says in Psalms 91 verse 1, He who lives in the sacred place of the Most High shall dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Be sensitive to the visitation of God. Sometimes people are not sensitive. Even when God is speaking, just be sensitive. I have come to discover some of the young people, some of the people in the church who are so sensitive to God's visitation. I tell you, they, their faith is triggered. You just listen, listen. You are so sensitive and you find yourself, your faith is triggered. And God will raise you. Yes, allow Christ to release you to the new faith. There's a scripture in Mark chapter 9, verse 22, verse 24, and verse 25 of this man who had a, a child that was possessed from birth. He reached a point and said, Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. Do not, let Jesus improve you. Let Jesus help you. There are areas of deficiency. Don't just live with them. Let Christ release you to the real faith. This man thought he had faith, but discovered he did not have the real faith required at this time. And God will bless you. It's very important to have a progressive touch by God. If you read Mark chapter 8 verse 22, this man whose Jesus touched the eyes, the man said, I see people walking like trees. Christ touched him again. And the man said, I can see everything clearly. I believe in staying before God for yet another touch. I, don't just go out to preach. Let God touch you again and again. In a way that you don't walk out seeing things like they resemble others. But you see everything clearly. That will help you to avoid confusion. That you help you to articulate things well. That you help you to focus because you stayed in God's presence. Received the touch and you felt, I, I need to be very powerful. Let God touch you again. Especially, let me tell you something. God you like to release you when he is very clear that you can see things clearly. And with that, we now come to an end of this special topic. Unlock your faith. Father, I pray that that brother, that sister, will no longer live a life of slavery. But my father, you reach down and unlock the gift, unlock the faith, activate his heart to do things, to serve you well, and to enjoy working with you. In Christ we pray.